The Disappearance of Mary Virginia Carpenter Mary Virginia Carpenter, who went by her middle name Virginia, was born in Texarkana, Texas on the 25th of January 1927. She was an only child to parents Floyd and Hazel Carpenter. She was last seen in Denton, Texas on the 1st of June 1948. She went to Texarkana Union Station and boarded a train to Denton and arrived six hours later. She packed a brown trunk, makeup case and a black pasteboard hat box. She was on her way to the Texas State College for Women campus, the TSCW, now Texas Women's University, to enroll in the summer course. Virginia previously attended the University of Arkansas and studied journalism, but transferred to the Texas State College for Women to study a career as a laboratory technician. <coughs> While Virginia was on the train heading for Denton, she met Marjorie Webster, a middle-aged school teacher who was also enrolling in the TSCW from Texarkana. After arriving in Denton, the two women got a taxi cab driven by Edgar Ray Jack Zachary to take them to the college dorms. As Marjorie was being dropped off at the Fitzgerald dormitories, Virginia realised that she forgot to check on her trunk at the Denton train station. She asked Zachary how much it would be to take her back to the station, to which he replied 75 cents. Marjorie asked if she needed to ride back with her, but Virginia refused stating, no I'll go alone, I'll be alright. After arriving again at the station, Virginia went inside to get her trunk, but came back a few minutes later claiming that she could not get it. She spoke to a railroad employee named Mr. Buttrell, who told her the trunk would not arrive until later. Zachary told Virginia to sign the back of her claim check and that he would pick it up for her and deliver it to her in the morning. Virginia agreed and gave him her luggage receipt after writing Mary Virginia Carpenter, room 200 Breckenridge and a dollar for an extra tip. Upon arriving at Breckenridge Hall at 9.30pm, Zachary said he saw a yellow or cream coloured Pontiac parked in the front. There was no moon and the street lights were out due to repair work and a cable. He reported that Virginia walked up to the vehicle which had two young men standing by it. One, one of them was tall, the other was short and stocky. She said, well what are you all doing here? He said it seemed as though she was surprised to see them. The shorter boy talked to her and lifted her up on the curb. Virginia told Zachary to place her luggage on the ground because the boys will get them for her and leave her trunk there in the morning as well. After doing so, Zachary drove off and did not hear the rest of the conversation. That was the last time anyone had seen Virginia. The taxi, the taxi cab driver, Zachary, he took two polygraph tests and passed. Search party searched the woods, tanks, storm drains, creeks, country roads and abandoned wells. A reward was offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of people responsible. It reached $1,368 and it went up as high as $3,000. On June 9, 1955, seven years after her disappearance, Virginia Carpenter was considered officially dead. On the 18th of October 1959, a three by wooden box was discovered containing female bones including the skull in a smokehouse near an abandoned farmhouse outside of Jefferson, Texas. The bones matched the height and weight of Virginia and were sent for examination. Her mother had hopes it was her daughter's remains because the bones had a deformatory in the right leg which made it shorter than the left, similar to her daughter's. The dental work did not match Virginia, however. Her father died in 1942, six years before Virginia's disappearance, and her mother died in 1980. Her mother believed her daughter was dead, but hoped at least to find her daughter's body before her own death. Sadly, Maria, Mary Virginia Carpenter is still missing to this day and her case was never closed but remains cold.